I will show you the science of actually how the cells work and you will have more knowledge than most doctors in the world today because they still believe in the genes. You are made out of 50 trillion cells and the cells are the living entities. So you are a community, not a single person. Every cell in your body has minus voltage on the inside and positive voltage on the outside. Every live cell is a battery. Every cell has about 1.4 volts. 50 trillion cells in the body times 1.4 volts is 700 trillion volts of electricity in your body right now. And with training and meditation, you can focus this energy called chi, and you can use that energy for healing. So while you see yourself as a physical entity, the new physics, you are energy waves interacting with each other right now. All animals and all plants communicate with vibration. The gazelle doesn't have to go up to the lion and say, are you my friend? Because at the distance, the energy could be felt and the gazelle will not go there because of bad vibes. If we, when we were young, were taught to be sensitive to the vibrations, we would not find ourselves in bad relationships and bad places. But we are usually told not to go by our feelings, but to listen to what people have to say. Language was designed to hide feelings. The point is, all organisms communicate by vibrations and know if they're in a good place or a bad place by reading the vibrations. We humans have that ability, but are not trained to use that ability. When we see people, like if I look at the audience or you see us, we see people as physical particles and machines, but that's an illusion because what we are are interacting waves. That's why one person can affect another person just by being in the field. And today physics studies the vibration, not the physical. And in quantum physics, we don't study the particles, we study the waves. And we study how the wave interference. All of the waves together is called the field. So you are made out of atoms, but you also are the field. You are connected to everything because you can't separate waves. Now I'm going to show you how your thoughts go out and affect your life on the outside. This is an older picture of a new technology called magnetoencephalograph, MEG. EEG, you put wires on your skin and read the brain activity. MEG, the, the probe does not even touch the head. You can read your brain activity outside of your head. It's not magic. Your thoughts are not contained in your head. As I talked about, people are not particles, they're waves. And waves become entangled with each other. The people that you get connected to, you are entangled with. And many people are familiar, if you think about someone you, or talk about someone you haven't seen for years, and I say, oh, I haven't seen my friend John in 10 years, then the phone rings and it's John. Or a letter comes in the mail from John. It's like the placebo nocebo. When you think very positive thoughts of someone, they make an effort to get in touch with you. But it works both ways. If you have a negative thought about somebody, Wherever they are, they will create negative talk about you. So it's very important to recognize your thoughts and your judgments are not just connected to you, they're connected to the people you talk about. So people would know that if you hit the right frequency, you can cause a crystal goblet to explode. It's called harmonic resonance or constructive interference. You are like a tuning fork with your brain and you're broadcasting frequencies of your thoughts. Which goblet is going to respond to your thoughts? The one that is harmonically resonant with your thoughts. If you live in fear, you're not going to activate the Dalai Lama, but you may get Scarface to show up. So when you are having thoughts, you are exciting and activating those things in the world 
that are connected to your thoughts. When a mugger is trying to pick out which person he's going to attack, of the different people walking down the street, which one do you think gets attacked? The one who is most afraid. Because the one who is most afraid will resonate, and that means that the mugger doesn't have to do anything, go boo, and everyone will give him, give him everything. But while it works for individuals, it is very powerful when a whole group of people have the same thoughts. You can't make a war unless enough people are ready to make a war. I'm going to show a, a picture of mass action here, and it relates to uh, in New York City one year after 911. So this is September 11, 2002, the one year anniversary of 911. What was everybody in New York thinking about that day? The winning number, 911, because we collectively create the reality. So when you look at yourself, you're not a single entity, but you are a community of 50 trillion cells. But it's important to understand the word community. Every cell is intelligent, but when they're in a community, they give up their personal intelligence and respond to the central voice. So that the community represents a thing, one thing called an organism. And in, in that community, that a cell must follow what the central voice is. And if the central voice says to die, the cells will die. So the central voice is the mind. And I will be talking about the nature of the two parts of the mind, and why we have trouble sometimes controlling our life. So what I would talk about is the role of how this mind works. First, there are signals from the environment, the internal and external environment. The brain, the function of the brain is to perceive the signals and then interpret those signals and then send the information to the cells to control the behavior and the genetics. So the function of the brain is perception, and from that creates the mind. Now, we have heard of something called the placebo effect, right? The placebo effect is when you have a very positive thought that something can heal you, even if it's, we, you don't know it, but it's a sugar pill, uh, but you believe it's the real medicine, then you can heal yourself with that. So the pill didn't heal you, it was the thought that healed you. Statistics reveal that one third of all medical healings, including surgery, are the result of the placebo effect. Now, the issue is that the placebo effect is when you have positive thinking. What about negative thinking? And this is what medicine does not tell you, is that there is negative thinking and it's called the nocebo effect. And in the same power that positive thinking can heal you, negative thinking can kill you. They're both the same effect. One is more positive, one is more negative, but the effects are exactly the same on your health. One will heal you and the other can make you sick. The point is, is that negative thinking can create all the effects of chemotherapy. Now think about this, if a doctor tells you you have a disease or the doctor tells you you're going to die and you believe the doctor because he's the professional, the belief will give you a disease and can cause you to die. In the United States in the South, there's a religious group called the Baptist Fundamentalist. And this one group works themselves up into a state of ecstasy, religious ecstasy. And they believe God protects them. And so they will work with snakes, poisonous snakes, like rattlesnakes. To, and they will even get bitten by the snake and nothing happens to them. Now look at this though. Some of them, some of them will drink strychnine in toxic doses. And when they're in that state of belief, it does not affect them. So if you can drink toxic poison, then, then why, why do we worry so much about the toxins or the food and the, in, in the air and all that? Because we have a belief that the toxins can kill us. But even though I know this, I will not drink strychnine. And why? Because my belief is not as strong as their belief.
So if we were growing up and programmed with stronger beliefs, we would be more powerful than we are now.